Hi there guys, uh, this is Emmanuel. I've just uh, thought I'd do a pre uh, thing before the video starts and uh, just to let you know that uh, this video is about uh, the rebuild of the Bertie, the, the Volkswagen uh, engine. So, I um, don't know, some of you might have watched the beginning that we did the video before. The old engine that came with this car is um, scrap still got it but uh, it is scrap uh, I bead blasted the cases and they're all pitted and there's holes in them so that's done and uh, I bought another engine off eBay uh, in parts for 150 pounds and um, this video that you're gonna see is basically us trying to rebuild the old engine realizing we're not gonna do that and then changing plan and using the bits that came to make an engine so a chap called Stephen has come over to help me from two miles up the road a place called Aston he cycled over here a couple of times about four or five times actually he just emailed me offered to help and uh, yeah so Stephen's been helping with this engine and I needed a bit of help because I was not really feeling the uh, motivation to get on and start you know because it's a bit daunting when you haven't worked on something before. Not a fan of reading Haynes manuals, so uh, Steve's a good helping hand, and he, he he's the same like me. You know, he, he hasn't got experience, so we're uh, anyway. So that's that. So the video is about uh, rebuilding this VW engine, so we can put it back into this VW, turn it into a, at least a rolling project or a running project, whatever it's called, and. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Kate the Capri's back. She's undercover. Uh, so, but that will be a different video. So this is about Bertie's engine and Steve filming. Steve's, uh, I think, some of the filming Steve did done was good, but he he only started using the camera recently. So, a um, bit of zooming in and out, and uh, that's about it. So. If you guys want, um, a few of you have suggested that I do a live stream, a Q&A live stream, which is basically there. We do a live stream and you guys can feel free to ask any questions you want and I'll answer them there and then live. Let me know if you think a Q&A would be a good idea, a live stream, maybe this Saturday uh, around 3 o'clock. <laughs> that sounds like I've already made my mind up, but I haven't. So. Yeah, let me know if you'd like to, to, to do a Q&A session. Uh, also, check, uh, there's a channel up in Scotland, a chap called um, Alice there. He's Ali Mac Mechanical. He's one of the guys that follows this channel. And I've started following his channel. He does, every Thursday evening, about 7, 7.30, he does a live stream on YouTube on his channel. I'll put a link below. And every Thursday he does a live stream where three or four, five or six gentlemen, ladies, come on, all mechanical minded, you know, classic cars and scr scrap as well. And they just do a live chat on the, the live chat. And I took part of it a couple of Thursdays ago. So it was really nice, very laid back from people all over the world, America, Australia, New Zealand, freaking, I don't know. So it's very nice. So I'll put a link. It's very nice, chilled chat. So. Have a look at uh, Ali's um, channel. Also, a few thank yous and shout outs to Christian, um, Steve, um, Jamie. Uh, some people have sent me some gifts, which is lovely tools and equipment and stuff, and food and uh, things like that. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'll just let the video roll now. Um, just us rebuilding the engine. Also, talking about live streaming shall I do an attempt to start the engine up as a live stream again would you like to see the light would you like to join a live stream to watch us trying to start this engine <clears throat> now some of you might have watched our Pinto engine live stream engine startup uh, so maybe you you can you have more of an idea of what it's like so no pretests it's I'd like to record the actual attempt to start it, which could be a miserable failure. You know, it doesn't even get to the point where it starts, but uh, I'd like to do it like that. 
if I get a bit of help to do the live stream while I try and get the VW engine running. Uh, never, never had, never run one of these engines before. Never stripped one. Never rebuilt one. I don't read the Hades manual, so it's a bit sketchy, uh, which might add to the uh, the fun part of it. So, let me know if you want me to do a Q and A for the channel, for me, for the people that you know behind this channel, any car stuff. Uh, let me know if you want to do a live stream with the engine start. Can't remember what the other question was. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, enjoy the video, guys. See you in a bit. Got a uh, nice gift from a gentleman called Christian, who uh, wrote to me um, and uh, said, "Here's a couple of things that you might find useful. It's a universal clutch alignment tool." which is uh, um, this is good and I'm, I'm, I'm glad he sent that because I could have done with that when we were building Kate uh, and hopefully she, this one will come handy with the VW engine and also a look at that man he's made it uh, instructions and everything this is a flywheel locking tool it's for a particular brand of cars uh, but with a bit of adaptation it might become um, useful for some other engine so thank you very much Christian mate it's a very sweet gesture of you and definitely put this at least into use and uh, as I said mate that's very nice of you thank you very much and uh, for the lovely letter as well and the instructions so guys um, drinking a beer it's warm out there's a little Bertie so here are all the degrees parts they came back today crankshaft which is looking quite good actually I don't know how to remove this thing here I, I guess that needs to be pushed off or something if any of you know how I can remove these two gears to get to this bearing housing I think that's a bearing that would be great flywheel's fine crankcases have been degreased but um, it's like a strip must have used some sort of really strong acid because it's although it's took the grease away it's left it sort of burnt singed onto the the cases so possibly bead blast this stuff um, which is going to make my bead blast my media is going to go a bit darker which I'm not too happy with but it's worth it uh, still the heads are degreased these have got um, this one's got three broken studs that's got two broken studs so these need to go to a machine shop um, they don't look too bad to be honest uh, the, the seats might need lapping but uh, I'll be blast these as well both top valve covers are fine they'll need beat blasting connecting the rods unfortunately the gentleman that did this lost one of my nuts <laughs> so I need the nut guys uh, cam shaft, as you can tell, the sprocket's gone, and I don't know how you remove how you remove a cam sprocket. Anyway, that's shot. Uh, those studs are just uh, cylinder stud thingy bobbies. And thing is, I bought a job lot, guys. A gentleman from eBay uh, sold me another engine. Uh, 1300 single port 150 quid and so um, I don't know I might that is probably in a better condition to build this engine than it is to build this one um, but I'm gonna be a bit stubborn here and see if I can uh, break the back of it with this slot here so I guess this is what the sprocket is supposed to look like very clean uh, they're not exactly the same, the sprockets. Whoops. Well, they're not going to be the same if I do that very often. See there, they, they do look different, but when I match the gears up, they've got the same pitch and the same diameter. The cams look the same, so I'm tempted to just use that and hope for the best. It looks like a... It looks like the surface of the moon. It's not what you'd call um, factory new, no. no. And that, that thing there, 
Uh, I guess this is this area here is meant to have a seal on it to stop the oil falling out. And here you can see that it's got the uh, corrosion right on where the seal should sit. So really, that's kind of <coughs> it's finished, isn't it? Mm, I want to say no, but I mean I think if a VW specialist was looking at this, we'd probably be laughing, saying, "Yes, it's finished, mate." But uh, you know, with a bit of a uh, We've got the enthusiasm thing going for us. Um, I'm not worried too much about this rust here. I am worried about that thing there because obviously the, the integrity of this is compromised. You can see it there. And I am worried about that there. Um, this is fine. I say fine. And then in here, we've got a funny situation where we've got a, a little pinhole here where liquids coming out of right this was happening last night and I have absolutely no idea what is causing that because there's nothing behind it no oil gallery so it's as though it's got this engine is got its own ghost pushing liquid out and it's also got a funny hole down there which leads to nowhere and I don't know if that's just a casting fault which I doubt it I don't know what that is and then we've got the, this horrible rod here in this little corner just there again which is pretty freaky and to, to, to cover to make all this worse I've bead blasted this which means that every single nook and cranny inside and out is plastered with uh, glass media so getting that out is a bit of a freaking nightmare will, will probably be impossible to get all of it out um, so that means that the engine will have to deal with some glass media when and if eventually it gets started that just come out in the oil would it? well some of it might come in the oil I don't even know if these have a freaking oil filter do they have an oil filter? VW's like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. should have an oil filter shouldn't it? I think so yeah so some of it might be dealt with by the oil filter but some of it will embed itself in the bearings the bearings I think are made to take some of that right but not much of it so I'll do my best to clean it and blow through all the freaking passages like what the f*** is this does this is that supposed to be like that well you see that one's got a hole in it for oil to come through I guess right I think that's an oil gallery so this one has oil coming into lubricating this journal for the cam the cam shaft which will be like that mm -hmm. but how does that get lubed there's nothing there to lube that ah hang on sorry my mistake lube would come out the other one yes that's the other half and clearly that's what supplies the lube I'm not too sure what that that might be to lube something else further nothing there i don't know okay so that's the old one which is a, a goner and this is the newer one and when you put them next to each other phase them so they're phased correctly they are identical so I am keen to say yeah that we can replace the old one with this new one is that uh, they don't look right but that's because this one still hasn't there you go is that better I hope they're the same freaking engine. <coughs> there we go. It's alright, that's normal. There we go. Talking so clearly this the, look at the pitting here plus that thing there. Right? That little danger zone there, which is where normally a seal needs to go there to keep the oil from falling out. Um, so we've got this compared to this I mean this looks dirty but there is zero corrosion zero corrosion and it doesn't mean that it's perfect I can see so there's been a gouge there which providing is not a split should be yeah man 
and I hope it's the identical engine. I mean, it doesn't really matter because we're going to build this with his hardware, all of that stuff there. So basically, he stripped a running engine to rebuild it, nut and bolt restoration, stopped halfway, sold it to us for 150 quid. Okay? So basically, we've got a scrap engine with some usable parts, like the crankshaft is good. Uh, but we don't want to mess around with details, so we're probably going to scrap this engine and project completely Engine project and move on to this engine A long farewell to this piece of crud Scrap man's going to get some magnesium Engine. I'm going to chuck these in a bit. A few words. Goodbye, valves. <laughs> Let's go, man. Hi there, chaps. Are you recording with the little red thing? It is. A little red thing is going, but you're a silhouette. <laughs> All right, there, chaps. Uh, we've got to. We've had to scrap the engine that we made. Well, we didn't make it actually. The engine that came with Bertie uh, is completely gone, so we've scrapped that. Thankfully, we've bought this spare engine from a gentleman on eBay, which cost us 150 quid, and it looks to be in much better condition, and it included a lot of good tinware. Uh, it's still a 1300 single port engine. It also included perfect cylinders and pistons. Basically, the gentleman just stripped the engine to rebuild it as a spare, but he gave up and thankfully he's given it to us so that's the new crankshaft and these are the new crankcases and we're just working out now the size for the bearings uh, and the seals and bits and pieces that we're going to need for the rebuild and we're going to go to Kingfisher Customs in a bit we're going to cycle there with my main man Stephen behind the camera Yo. and <laughs> we're going to uh, at the minute this is the uh, um, carburetor we pulled out from the first engine the 1300 engine and uh, it's seized so we are gonna just uh, soak it in for a couple of days in a couple of inches of paraffin to help us uh, free that up and then we're gonna get on our bikes and we're gonna go to Kingfisher Customs with a credit card and a few measurements and see what we come back with to uh, help us put this engine back together again. Neither of us have ever seen the insides of an engine like this. Never worked on one, so we're on for a, a bit of a learning curve. See what's what. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of paraffin. Oh, is this more urine? Oh no, it's not <laughs> paraffin. It smells freaking lovely, man. It doesn't, uh, yeah, it looks a bit like piss, but it smells nice. Shit, I didn't engineer that very well, did I? No, I'm going to have to cut that out, Stephen. Oh, come on, you little sucker. So close. Oh, we've done it. Right. That is... Perfection. I'll put another inch in it. Right, that's it, done. Let's go, man. Let that soak for a couple of days on the shelf somewhere and we can go and have a little back ride right guys we bought the uh, expensive uh, holds oh no it's worth friggin uh, what should we call it uh, brake cleaner for cleaning parts of the engine we've also got one of these EMPI flywheel um, locking tools which might come in handy if we get to that stage and we bought a gasket kit. So Steve and I, say hi Steve. Hello there. Is going to clean a little bit more the crankcases to make sure any debris that's fallen in during our little exploitary efforts is coming out. And then uh, we're gonna have a go at assembling this piece of. Right chap, so obviously we know that these caps, that's the, the conrod there, and that is the the bearing cap and uh, yes the writing the matching so the cap and the rod are on the right way but what we don't know is 
how do you know if it needs to be fitted like that or like that? Is there anything on the on the on the rod that will tell us which direction they need to face, or are they omnidirectional? If you know what I mean. If any of you know how to answer that, please let us know. What are you doing here, Steve? Well, there are some there are some holes. There yeah. may be some debris. Yeah. And where there is, you're basically removing some debris from the crankcase. Yeah. What we don't know is, do these engines even have oil filters? We will find out one day. Yeah. Okay. I think that's... And now you're going to say you're going to tip it over... And leave it to, 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 to drip dry. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, should we get the air compressor on it? Yeah, get the air compressor on it. That's a good idea. Straight away? Yeah, straight away, man. Hit, hit it while it's hot. Nail it. Hold the block. Hold it because it's going to go backwards. This one is. Yeah. Yeah. Clean this now. Oops. There you go. Freaking awesome, man. These things are made to chuck out some serious volume, don't they? Oops. Shit, man. He's going to There's like tons coming out. There's all this crud. That's brilliant. It's so satisfying. You do get the immediate impact of it, don't you? As well, you it's do like, look see all it. the crap that's coming out, man. There's tons of it. It's filthy, yeah. So this is going to be uh, the stuff that we're going to try and put together, and we might have to bee blast these and paint those or leave them as they are actually because it's more patina like that with a bit of cobweb on it so we've got all the pistons and all the cylinders we've got all the piston ring assemblies uh, and the piston ring retainer thing of all these piston gudgeon ring retainers that's a fuel pump some other bits and pieces in there the, the oil pump and the cylinder heads i think the um yeah the those things are removed so we'll have to put those in again Got oil dipstick, which is freaking awesome. Is this just a cooler, an oil cooler, or does it act as a filter as well? Guys, yeah, did we ask it before to tell us if they have oil filters? Do no, these, do these engines have oil filters? We can't find one. No, that's the uh, pulley belt, pul pulley belt thing. Got some lovely original Bosch spark plugs. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to use those. We got another alternator. And so that's good. So yeah, we've got a good basis of an engine rebuild with the crankcases. Let me just get the crankcases over. Uh, fuck it, I'm not going to get the crankcases over. So we'll, it's the crankshaft and the two halves that are missing. The crankshafts, the rods, and the two crankcases. So we've just wanted to pick out everything, sort of have a bit of a look at it and uh, see about putting back the crank in the crankcase. I think if we can do that today, Steve, with the camshaft as well, that will be a good freaking evening's effort. Yeah, it's going. Go for it. Whoops. You just talk through what that thing does. Yeah, it's a stud extractor. It's got like a, a, cl a, cl a clamp, a claw clamp thing. And as you tighten it, the, cl the clamp clamps on the screw. And it's uh, you're able to um, extract some st studs. So those a, ones this is a small one. This is a quarter inch ex extractor. And you get three eighths extractors and half inch extractors. So you, you can retrieve some significant studs with them. And the, uh, the studs on the other engine, the new engine, are missing. So yeah. despite having thrown this one out. We, thankfully the scrap man hasn't picked it up yet. So. Yeah, good job he's paying attention to all these concerns about COVID-19. And Yep. We are too. We're at least a metre away. Yep. And we're wearing our... Uh, Protective gear as well. Yeah, no, my, it's all my, out. My German flip-flops. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, 
this this invisible protective gear. Right, I don't know if this one is going to come out, but I'm going to give it a go. This is the one that keeps the oil pickup pipe in place. Uh, it's a bit of a different design. What do you think, man? Two weeks on this engine is going to be spitting flames? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be hairing down the uh, Aston Expressway, followed by the police because there's no MOT tax and insurance, but that's the way it goes. Do you think we could rob a bank with this? Um, so it would have to be in an area where the police are just completely subnormal, but yeah. maybe that's what happens sometimes, you know? Maybe that you're so slow that you confuse everyone and everything and the police just can't catch you because you're being slow. Or if you rob a bank, you get someone to speed up in a fast car, everyone assumes it's the fast car that's got all the loot and, yeah. um, and, you, and there you are in your VW Beetle. How many, how many million pounds do you think you could fit in, on a, in a Beetle without a roof rack? Oh, how many in, millions? In 50 pound notes, I would think probably about 30 or 40. 30 or 40 million pound notes in a Beetle, yeah? In 50 pound notes, yeah. yeah. And that'll give you enough space to drive it. Yeah, if, if you went into a bank and they'd got that. Um, 50 million quid. And hope someone left in a fast car at the same time. Hmm. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> right, this is amazing. Shall we do this on the other one as well, to retrieve the other ones? More studs to come out? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's a stud. Do you want to take that one out? No. Just for the hell of it. I'm not going to get rid of this engine yet, though, I've decided. It would make a nice flower pot or something. It would make a nice flower pot. You could have some little kind of climbers growing up the... Uh, yeah, magnesium flower pot. That's air-cooled. Probably kill every... Yeah. Everything that went in it. Yeah. I don't know how much the soil and the magnesium would mix together. So... Mr. Spadex Strutter. Oh, cameraman's awake. Sorry, I was just filming your foot or something then, I think. Oh, that's all right. That's what happens with VW engines, isn't it? What, it makes things go gangrene? Well, you, you never know what's going to... Up here? Oh yeah, you could get all kinds of diseases from VWs. <laughs> is that why they call it the bug? This is it. Maybe if you work on one, you don't get COVID-19, but you might get everything else. Toe fungus. What? You can say. Huh. Oh shit. Oh yeah, baby. Get in there. Don't need to film me doing all of them, man. People are going to fall asleep. Man. Come on, camera, man. Do you smell something like chlorine from a, be a ble bleach, like a swimming pool? Uh, you know what? I did it this morning. You washed I... yourself with a bleach? No, I've got the white carpet. I couldn't get clean. Uh huh. So, um. Uh. You bleached it? I put some bleach in the. Uh, well, and it's a bit tight, you know, there's like a vax solution to use for uh, cleaning your carpet, yeah. like a soap. Yeah. Especially designed, purpose designed. Um, some washing powders, yeah. they're for use as low as kind of like 10, 15 degrees. So, um, I tend to use washing powder and a squirt of bleach, basically, just to... Uh, Remove uh, stainage. Yeah, cool. and just kind of get white colour back. So it's probably me kneeling in bleach, that having a bit on my knees actually. So did you choose the white uh, carpet? I did because Ooh. it's an extremely dark blue. That's how you royal over well, you mate. Very what? Royal. Is it royal? Yeah. Well, in my eyes, it is very pure. It is. It is. Get naked. So we've got some brass-looking stuff there, copper or whatever it's called. Now this is, these are those, let's chop that off, spill that stuff in there, we need that, don't know what that is, we don't know this, that's brilliant, these are obviously, oh look, we've got those plates here, see these plates? The shims. 
Oh, what, what, shims. What, what, crank shims. No, they? no, no, no. They, they look like some sort of ventilation stuff. And we've got some nice, plenty of gaskets going on. I didn't see many gaskets coming out. But look at all that, man. Some other weird fibre washers there. Look at all this. Jeez, do we need all this stuff? What's all this for? Anyway, try and memorise the shapes, man. And look at that. What the f is that for the distributor or something? That, that looks familiar. Don't know what that. That's don't know what that is either. Anyways, that's good. And that is just the freaking start of it. Man, there's loads of gaskets, isn't there? There was I thinking there aren't any. Hmm? I thought there weren't any. I know, I know. And there are thousands. Look at this. Ah, do you know what these are? Those. These things here. Six of them are off the... Those that, that they don't need. They're whatever those rods are called. Six of those are the... Uh, uh, the rods to go on there, but I, I don't know. Sorry, oh. the um, O-rings to go on those rods, but what the rest of them are? Studs or rods? These are studs. Those are studs. <laughs> Look at all this, man. What on earth is all this? Oh my god. Okay, these are exhaust man, exhaust gaskets, I guess, for twin port engines. So we're not going to be using that, but we will be using these, I believe. Okay, that's cool. I don't know what the f all this is about, man. That's possibly for the intake. I don't know. Oh shit, man! We're in for some serious shit, man. And I don't know what that is. Is that, was, is that a spare one of those things we can yeah, decide where yeah, it came from? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, So somehow, we're hopefully, we're going to find our way through. Done. See the VW on the casting. It's got the VW mark. Do you think this engine was made around the si <coughs> the sixties? <coughs> Could have been made around the time of Sergeant Pepper and Jimi Hendrix and uh, Pink Floyd. That kind of stuff, yeah. Debbie does Dallas. That's it, yeah. We, we need a. Uh, um, okay. it's just it's 20, it's 18 pounds I think or something. 18 pounds? Should I say 324? Yeah. So those, are they crank rods? The piston rods that connect to the crank need to be torqued down to 27 foot pounds, which was 300 and something. 324. 324 inch pounds. So that's why. So right now we are at 330, 354, so we need to drop that down a bit too, well that's 266. We're going to get there, we're going to get there. There we go, so 300, that's it, I think this will do. What was it, 14? It was a 14 wasn't it? What was 14? Uh, the size of the socket. Uh, it looks like about 14, I think you said it was. Yeah. So, are you ready for this? Go away. Sorry, go for it, yeah. Go away? You go. want to go away? No, just go for it, go for it. <laughs> 